Imagine something so small that millions could fit on the head of a pin, yet powerful enough to shut down entire countries. Something that's not quite alive, but can hijack living cells to make copies of itself. You just entered the strange world of viruses. Welcome to Seismic, I'm Matt, and today we're exploring some of the most mysterious entities in biology, viruses. By the end of this video, you'll understand what viruses are, how they work, and why they've sparked one of biology's biggest debates. Let's meet these tiny hijackers. So what exactly are viruses? Think of them as biological pirates. They can't survive on their own, so they hijack other organisms' cells to reproduce. Viruses are incredibly tiny. Most are 20 to 300 nanometers across. That's about 100 times smaller than bacteria and 1,000 times smaller than human cells. You'd need an electron microscope to even see them. All viruses have the same basic structure, genetic material, either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protein coat called a capsid. Many viruses also have an outer envelope made from the membrane of cells they've infected. Now that's some horror movie level stuff. Viruses come in various shapes. Some look like spheres, others like rods, and some have complex structures that look almost like tiny spaceships landing on cells. Unlike bacteria and cells, viruses don't have cellular structures like mitochondria, ribosomes, or cell membranes. They're basically just genetic instructions wrapped in protein, which is why many scientists debate whether they're truly alive. Most viruses are very specific about what they can infect. Some only infect humans, others only infect plants, and bacteriophages only infect bacteria. It's like having a key that only fits one specific lock. Since viruses can't reproduce on their own, they've evolved an amazing strategy. They turn living cells into virus-making factories. Let's watch this process play out step by step. First, attachment. The virus binds to specific receptor proteins on the cell's surface. It's like a key fitting into a lock. Only cells with the right receptors can be infected by particular viruses. Next, entry. The virus injects its genetic material into the cell, or sometimes the entire virus gets absorbed. Different viruses use different entry strategies. Then comes the takeover. The viral genetic material hijacks the cell's normal processes. Instead of making cellular proteins, the cell's ribosomes start making viral proteins. Instead of copying its own DNA, the cell copies viral genetic material instead. Assembly follows. New viral components are put together inside the cell, creating dozens or hundreds of new virus particles. Finally, release. The new viruses escape to infect other cells. Some viruses burst the cell open, killing it entirely. Others bud off gradually, leaving the cell damaged but initially alive. This process can happen incredibly fast. One virus can become hundreds within hours, and those hundreds can become millions within days. This brings us to one of biology's biggest debates. Are viruses alive? Let's look at the evidence on both sides. Arguments that viruses aren't alive. They can't reproduce without a host cell, they don't have cellular structure, they don't carry out metabolism, and they can't respond to their environment on their own. They contain genetic material, they reproduce, even if they need a little help, they evolve and adapt over time, and they can respond to selective pressures. Well, viruses definitely evolve. The flu virus changes every year, which is why you need annual flu shots. Some viruses develop resistance to antiviral drugs, just like bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. Most scientists today classify viruses as obligate intracellular parasites. They exist at the boundary basically between living and non-living material. They're not alive in the traditional sense, but they're not just simple chemicals either. Some scientists think viruses might represent evolutionary bridges between complex chemicals chemicals, and the first living cells. Or they might be remnants of ancient cells that lost their cellular machinery over time. Viruses cause many diseases we encounter regularly. Common colds, flu, chickenpox, and more recently, COVID-19. But how do they make us sick? Viruses cause disease in several ways. They can directly kill cells during reproduction, trigger harmful immune responses, or disrupt normal cellular functions. When viruses infect you, your immune system springs into action. White blood cells recognize viral proteins as foreign and mount an attack. Many cold and flu symptoms are actually your immune system fighting the virus. Vaccines work by showing your immune system what viral proteins look like without causing disease. Then, if you encounter the real virus, your immune system can respond quickly 
quickly and effectively. Unlike bacterial infections, viral infections cannot be treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics kill bacteria, but they don't affect viruses. That's why doctors often say, let a cold run its course. Your immune system has to do the work. Not all viruses are harmful. Scientists have modified viruses for gene therapy to treat genetic diseases. Bacteriophages that kill bacteria are being developed as alternatives to antibiotics. Viruses are truly unique entities, not quite alive, but not just simple chemicals either. They're masters of hijacking cellular machinery to reproduce, and they've shaped the evolution of all life on Earth. Understanding viruses is crucial for developing vaccines, antiviral treatments, and even using viruses as tools for medicine and research. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us just how important virology research really truly is. Who knows, maybe you'll become a virologist, studying these fascinating entities, helping develop new vaccines or treatments, or using viruses as tools to cure genetic diseases. Now, don't forget to subscribe and let me know down in the comments, what's the most interesting thing you learned about viruses? Thanks for exploring these tiny hijackers with Seismic. Want to explore more about microorganisms and infectious diseases? Check out our complete science curriculum at seismic.com, where every student can learn, grow, and achieve.